Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So today let us go over a uh, couple of problems. Uh, the first problem deals with uh, evaluation of Gibbs free energy enthalpy and entropies of a substance uh, based upon the knowledge of uh, heat capacities at constant pressure and the second problem deals with uh, calculation of entropy changes uh, associated with the irreversible process of heat transfer. So we have seen Gibbs free energy is a state function and it can be expressed as G is equal to H minus T S and we can use Gibbs free energy as a criteria for equilibrium with temperature and pressure as the independent variables. But how to evaluate this Gibbs free energies? So basically we need to evaluate the enthalpies and entropies and from which we can evaluate the Gibbs free energies. So how do we get to enthalpies and entropies of a substance? So here the heat capacity becomes quite useful. We know that the heat capacity at constant pressure is defined as heat absorbed at constant pressure per unit rise in temperature. So Cp is equal to delta Qp by dt. So note small heat effects uh, by delta because heat is a path function and uh, we are denoting small differences in temperature by dt because t is a state function and we can define the exact differential. Now we know uh, heat absorbed at constant pressure is basically the change in enthalpy. So we can write this as delta Qp is equal to dh. So Cp is equal to dh by dt. So basically dh is equal to CPDT. Similarly, in order to get to entropy, we can use the first law of thermodynamics. So, delta Qp can be replaced by du plus delta W, change in internal energy plus the work done, and du can be replaced by the combination of first and second law. We know du is equal to TDS minus P d V and delta W is P d V by d T. So basically we get d S is equal to C P by T d T. So let us get to first the enthalpy. So based upon this if we make a state change and the temperatures of the two states are T 1 and the second state is T 2 then we can write delta H for the state change as H at T 2 minus H at T 1 is equal to integral C P D T from T 1 to T 2. So basically to get to the enthalpy at any temperature T 2 we need to know enthalpy of at one temperature T 1 and the knowledge of Cp as a function of temperature. So the typically Cp are measurable quantities because we can measure the heat effects and uh, so there are databases available for Cp as a function of temperature over the different ranges of temperature for different materials. So from there we can evaluate these integral Cp dt but what about the enthalpy at temperature T1? So as I said last class uh, these uh, properties we cannot evaluate the absolute quantities like enthalpies and Gibbs free energies but it is sufficient to know the differences in these properties while going from one state to the other. So in other words we can use enthalpy at one temperature as a reference point and can evaluate the enthalpies with respect to that reference. So typically the convention for enthalpy is the enthalpy of a pure element in its stable state at 298 Kelvin is taken as 0. Right? So enthalpy 
of a pure element this is important in its stable state at 298 Kelvin is taken as 0. This is important at 298 Kelvin the element in its stable state has 0 enthalpy by, by this convention. So, that is taken as the reference state for enthalpy evaluation. So, for example, iron we know at room temperature that is at 298 Kelvin exists as BCC. So, enthalpy of BCC iron at 298 Kelvin is taken as 0, but enthalpy of FCC iron at 298 Kelvin will obviously have some non-zero value. Then for entropy we can write delta S is equal to S at T 2 minus S at T 1 equal to integral C p by T d t. So, S at T 2 is given as S at T 1 plus integral T 1 to T 2 C p by T d t. So, what about the reference for entropy? So, here we use the third law of thermodynamics. What is the third law? So, the entropy of a homogeneous substance in complete internal equilibrium is 0 at 0 Kelvin. Okay. So, that is the third law of thermodynamics. So, this is important the substance has to be in complete internal equilibrium right. For example, as any crystalline solid for example, uh, has some equilibrium vacancy concentration at any temperature above 0 Kelvin right and it is a function of temperature. So, vacancy concentration increases as the temperature increases. So, as you decrease the temperature vacancy concentration should decrease with the temperature and so, at 0 Kelvin the vacancy concentration should reach 0, but this does not usually happen. The excess vacancies have to be uh, annihilated at the sinks and uh, so as you cool down the kinetics becomes very slow and so the vacancy concentration cannot approach equilibrium vacancy concentration at lower temperature. So, at 0 Kelvin if you could reach 0 Kelvin we, we would still have some vacancy uh, excess left over. And so, for that solid then the entropy at 0 Kelvin will not be 0. Okay. So, we assume basically that at 0 Kelvin there will be a pure crystalline solid without any defects. So, entropy can have absolute values evaluated based upon the third law of thermodynamics. So, there are data tabulated uh, for standard entropies at 298 Kelvin. Okay. So, in the tabulated data you will find those. So, based upon uh, knowledge of Cp versus uh, temperature, we can get to the enthalpies and entropy and then from it we can evaluate the Gibbs free energies. So, the Cp is typically expressed as a function of temperature, the empirical formula the tab in the tabulated data usually is A plus B T plus C by T square. So, for example, I have listed uh, uh, CPs for uh, some of the materials. So, you can see for aluminum solid the heat capacity is 20.67 plus 12.38 times 10 to power minus 3 T. So, the value of A here is 20.67 and B is 12.38. If you look at oxygen gas uh, the value of A is 29.96, B is 4.18 times 10 to power minus 3 and C is minus 1.67 times 10 to power 5. So, based upon this let us say uh, if we want to evaluate uh, Gibbs free energy of 1 mole of aluminum at let us say 800 degree centigrade, 
that should be enthalpy of aluminum liquid at 800 degrees centigrade minus T times entropy of aluminum liquid at 800 degrees centigrade, right. 800 degrees centigrade is basically 1073 Kelvin. So, if we write the formula for enthalpy of aluminum liquid at 1073 Kelvin. So, how do we go about this? We know the enthalpy of uh, aluminum solid at 298 Kelvin. Right, which is by convention 0. Right. So, we know that H of aluminum solid at 298 Kelvin plus we know how the Cp of aluminum varies with temperature. So, we know integral Cp dt from 298 to the aluminum will melt in between right before we reach 1073 Kelvin. So, it melts at 934 Kelvin. So, we can use C p solid only up to 934 Kelvin. Then when aluminum melts it will absorb heat right. So, we need to consider that latent heat of melting. So, delta H melting of aluminum at 934 Kelvin and then aluminum becomes liquid. So, we have to heat a liquid aluminum from 934 to the temperature desired that is 1073 Kelvin. So, C p d t this is C p of aluminum liquid the first integral C p is for aluminum solid. Okay. Delta H melting of aluminum at 934 Kelvin is 10700 joules per mole. So, if we substitute H of aluminum solid at 290 Kelvin is 0 plus C p of aluminum solid integral 20.67. So, 20.67 times 934 minus 298 plus integral T d t is t square by 2 12.38 into 10 to power minus 3 by 2 934 square minus 298 square and the enthalpy of melting of aluminum is 10700 plus aluminum liquid the C p of aluminum liquid is constant. So, 31.76 times 1073 minus 934. So, this comes out to be 33,110 joules. So, now next we evaluate entropy. So, entropy of aluminum liquid at 1073 Kelvin can be written as enthalpy entropy of aluminum solid at 298 Kelvin plus integral 298 to the melting point 934 of C p. The C p is of aluminum solid C p by T d T plus integral 934 to 1073 C p of aluminum liquid by T d T and then at 934 there is a melting occurring. So, we need to consider the entropy of melting of aluminum at this is the equilibrium melting point is 934 Kelvin. So, this is a tabulated data we know uh, entropy of aluminum at 298 Kelvin is 28.3 joule per Kelvin per mole plus C p of aluminum solid by T. So, if you look at C p of aluminum solid integral of 20.67 by T d T 
will be 20.67 ln t. So, the limits are 934 ln of 934 by 298 plus 12.38 into 10 to the power minus 3. 934 minus 298 plus integral 31.76 by T d t that will be 31.76 ln 1073 divided by 934 and then finally, we need the entropy of melting. How do we get to this? We know the enthalpy of melting and at equilibrium melting temperature we know delta G melting will be 0, right? because at equilibrium melting solid is in equilibrium with liquid. So, if we change the state from solid to liquid, there should be no change in Gibbs free energy, which we know is equal to delta H melting minus T m delta S m. And so, delta S m is nothing but delta H m by T m. So, we know delta H m is 10700 divided by 934. So, we get delta S m which will be 10700 divided by 934. So, if we evaluate this, we get the entropy of aluminum at 1073 Kelvin to be 75.64 joule per Kelvin per mole. And so, once we know H and S, we can know Gibbs free energy of aluminum liquid at 1073 Kelvin is equal to 33110 minus 1073 times 75.64, which comes out to be minus 48050 joule per mole. Okay. So, this is how we can get to the uh, Gibbs free energies of the substances based upon the tabulated data of heat capacities at constant pressure. So, heat capacity becomes a very uh, useful parameter. Again, it can be experimentally determined, tabulated and can be used to generate the Gibbs free energy data as a function of temperature. Any question? Okay, so let's take a look at another problem. This is basically the problem of evaluating the changes in entropy when the heat transfer takes place, obviously from hotter body to the colder body. This is an irreversible process, right? So suppose we have a container of oil. which is at 0 normal temperature, the room temperature that is 27 degree centigrade, basically 300 Kelvin. And we drop a piece of steel, right. the temperature of steel before dropping is 427 degree centigrade, which is like 700 Kelvin. So, as soon as we drop the steel piece in the oil, there will be heat transfer from steel piece to the oil. So, the temperature of steel will come down, temperature of oil will increase and the heat transfer will continue until the equilibrium state is reached. And what is the equilibrium state? The equilibrium state is when there is a uniform temperature of oil and steel. Okay. So, what is that temperature T? So, we first need to evaluate the temperature T. So, we need to know the, uh, the quantity of oil and uh, steel of course. So, let us say the mass of steel is uh, 30 kg and mass of oil is 150 kg. Of course, we need to know the Cp. So, Cp of steel is given to be 
फोर सिक्स किलो जूल पर के जी पर केलविन एंड सी पी ऑफ ऑयल इज गिवन टू बी टू पॉइंट फाइव किलो जूल पर के जी पर केलविन एंड दिस इज ऑकरिंग एट ऑल कॉन्स्टेंट प्रेशर ऑफ वन एटमोसफेयर so what is the change in entropy this is what we need to calculate so first we need to get at the final temperature of the system the system of oil plus steel right so this container is given to be an perfectly insulated container which means there is no external heat effect the heat is transferred between steel and oil but there is no external heat effect so this we can know uh, based upon the cp data we know how much heat transfer is occurring so whatever heat lost by steel should be equal to the heat gained by the oil right so we can write m cp so this is for steel delta t is equal to mcp delta t for oil right this is for steel and this is we have to consider the magnitudes right so we can write thirty times point four six time let's say t is the final temperature that will be Seven hundred minus T should be equal to one fifty into two point five times T minus three hundred. So if we solve for T, we get T is equal to three one four point two Kelvin. So the final temperature of oil plus steel system will be three one four point two Kelvin. now let us evaluate the entropy change so for steel you can write delta s steel is equal to delta q integral delta q by t and we know pressure is constant and so delta q delta q p heat absorber constant pressure so that should be equal to integral dh by t or integral cp dt by t and we know the integral is from the initial temperature of steel was 700 and the final temperature is 314.2 so this should be equal to 0.46 ln 314.2 divided by 700 and this has to be multiplied by mass because cp is given in terms of per kg so This multiplied by thirty. So obviously three one four is less than seven hundred. So this logarithm of it is negative. So the entropy change for steel is negative. It comes out to be minus eleven point zero five kilo joule per kelvin, which is obvious, right? Because steel is losing heat. so heat is rejected by the steel so the entropy has to decrease there is no other external heat effect <coughs> similarly for oil we can write m oil cp oil ln the initial temperature the final temperature of oil is again 314.2 and the initial temperature was 300 kelvin for oil obviously heat is being absorbed by oil so the there is an increase in entropy so obviously the entropy change is positive 17.34 kilo joule per kelvin so if you consider oil plus steel as this system then we have delta s steel plus delta s oil 
and which should be positive right minus 11.05 plus 17.34 so that net entropy change for the system is positive because it is a diabetic right the walls are given to be insulated perfectly insulated constant temperatures at constant pressure extensive property but when temperature is an uh, is an intensive property okay so any question so far all right so we'll stop here